Hi everyone, this is Dr. Sandeep, working as Associate Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today we are going to discuss about the types of cooling curves and what are the different types of cooling curves we have and what is the importance of these cooling curves and how to draw these cooling curves with the help of the uh, Gibbs phase rule what you have discussed in the previous classes. So coming to the uh, cooling curves. So what is a cooling curve? So generally, if you define a cooling curve, so this cooling curve is a line graph that represents the change of phase of matter, typically from a gas to a solid or liquid to a solid. So what does this cooling curve represents? So this represents a line graph. Okay. So you can represent it is in a in, in terms of a line graph, and this represents the change of phase. Okay from the gas to solid or liquid to solid. So when any uh, material is changing from gas to solid or liquid to solid, that means there is some change of phase in between uh, the phases of the material. Okay, so this cooling curve is very, very useful uh, to represent the change of phase in terms of a line graph. So we can draw a graph which represents, which represents the change of phase of any type of material of different compositions and if you have seen here you have the four different types of cooling curves which are available first one is the cooling curve for pure metals okay so these cooling curves will change depending upon the type of uh, alloys what we have okay so if it is a pure metal we have one type of cooling curve that means during the change of its phase from the gas to solid or liquid to a solid Okay, so what happens here, because of these change in phase, there is a change in the graph of the uh, cooling curve also depending upon the type of metal if you are using. So like this, we have uh, four different types of uh, uh, cooling curves. First one is for uh, pure metals. The second one is for binary solid alloys. Third one is binary eutectic alloys. And fourth one is off eutectic binary alloys. So like this, we have th four different types of uh, uh, alloys for which we have the cooling curve. So if you see this figure, so in this x-axis, we have the time period and the along y, we have the temperature. So now what is happening? Generally, the cooling curves means when a metal is being cooled, okay, what is happening during this process of the uh, change of phase, we'll see here in this curve, suppose generally, General uh, cooling curve, if you see here, what is happening? We are drawing along x, y, x axis as temperature, y axis as the uh, temperature, and here the pouring temperature. So, this is the pouring temperature where <coughs> the material will start cooling down. So, this is the rate of cooling with respect to the time. So, this is the x axis. So, with respect to the time, we are reducing the temperature. That means there is a cooling of the material. And from this point A to point B. So from point A to point B, what is happening? What is the rate of cooling? We can calculate with the help of <coughs> this curve at this point. Next, after that, what is happening from B to C? There is a thermal arrest. Okay, that means equilibrium state. So maybe this liquid can be formed into complete a solid structure. Wherever you see along this point B and C, will have the complete solid structure or any liquid thing. <clears throat> so this type of uh, thing is called as an equilibrium uh, freezing temperature. And again from point C to D again, it comes to the other type of phase. So like this, there is changes of uh, phases uh, which represents as a cooling curve in any type of metal alloy which we are considering. So like this, we have uh, different types of cooling curves which are very useful for us to calculate what is the time of uh, rate of cooling and also at what point we can convert or the solid to a liquid or liquid to gaseous. All these things can be identified with the help of these cooling curves. Now, if you see here, you have uh, two different graphs. So first one graph represents for the phase diagram. So this is the phase diagram and this is the cooling curve. Okay, so these phase diagrams we have discussed in the previous uh, sessions. 
So what is the phase diagram? So this phase diagram also gives us the information of the material. What is the composition of the materials? Uh, what is the different types of phases are available? Whether it is a single phase or a double phase system is available. So all this information we can get from the uh, phase diagrams and also the uh, the melting temperature also can be calculated. All these things can be calculated with the help of these phase diagrams. Now, similarly, coming to the other portion, uh, other side of the uh, these cooling curves. So, what is happening here? This cooling curves represents as a graphical representation of the change of phase from the uh, solid to liquid or liquid to gaseous. Okay, so this is the information what we can get. And also we can get the equilibrium state of the material. Okay, throughout the zone, if you calculate, you will get any type of system which is in under equilibrium. Either it can be liquid or it can be a gaseous. <coughs> so the same thing for the x-axis, you have the uh, composition rate for the phase diagram. So in this phase diagram, you see what what are the things we are considering along x axis we are considering the composition percentage here we are taking copper and nickel and of course along y axis we are taking as temperature based on this at any point on the phase diagram if you want to find out the composition then it is very easy for us to calculate the composition suppose if i want a composition at this point of solid at point a so directly i draw the horizontal and vertical axis, I will find out what is the composition rate at this point as well as the temperature at this point and calculate. Similarly, if it is under in between the uh, dual zone, that means the two types of uh, phases, if it is under two types of phases, then I have to use the Tyler method which touches on the both sides and I will draw the perpendiculars as well as the verticals to get the temperature as well as the composition. So this is the composition percentage, this is the composition percentage and T1, T2. <coughs> so that is about the phase diagram. And coming to the, the cooling curve, so what this cooling curve refers, so this again along x axis we are taking time. So instead of phase there we are taking composition, here we have to take the time period. Now along y axis again the same thing, temperature, it will represent for temperature. Now Exactly, if you see the uh, cooling curve, if you compare this cooling curve with the phase diagram of uh, the pure metals, what is happening, you can see here. So it starts with this point and slowly, if you reduce the temperature, what is happening? So this is the liquidus line. Slowly, this liquid is being converting into freezing zone. That means, if you see the border points, so at this point, you have one point here, another. That means, this is the gap between the liquid and solids. So you have a region of liquid and solid. That's why it is a freezing region. That means from liquid to solid, you have a zone which is called the freezing zone. It tries to get freeze and completely after that, you'll get the solid zone, complete solid zone. So the same thing you can see here. Starts with liquid, slowly, liquidus and solids. So same thing we are getting from the phase diagram. So this phase diagram represents the how many phases are present in this uh, system and the cooling curve will give you the graphical representation of the change of phases okay from the a solid to liquid or from a liquid to gaseous state we can get the information of these <coughs> cooling curves. But one thing you have to remember that in the phase diagram the x coordinate is the composition and y coordinate is temperature but coming to the cooling curves the x coordinate will be the uh, the temperature and the y coordinate will be the same as for the phase diagram that is the temperature. So this is how the difference between the phase diagram as well as the cooling curve. Phase diagram represents the phases present in the system and the cooling curve represents the change of phase present in that system. Okay, so that is the difference between the cooling curve as well as the temperature. Now. For the pure metals, if you observe the pure metals, what is happening inside? How does the cooling curves are represented for the pure metals? If you see here, again along the x-axis, you will write the uh, the time as well as the y-axis. At first, if you take the temperature. Now, 
this is the pouring temperature where the liquid is being melted and start pouring at that point is called the pouring temperature so it starts with this point suppose now slowly if you pour that material okay what is happening we are trying to let it cool okay so that is the cooling rate of the conversion of that liquid to the solid state okay so what is happening here slowly you are pouring this is called the pouring temperature you are giving the liquid state so this is the liquid state now after that slowly what is happening this liquid is being freezed so this is being freezed that means this is the equilibrium temperature so it is reaching to its equilibrium temperature and after that it is completely solidifying so the liquid is being converting into the freezing state and from the freezing state it is converting to solid state so this is the change of phase between the liquid as well as the solid so how the change is occurring we can observe through the cooling curve so that is the importance of the cooling curves and how many types of phases are also present we can give the information from the cooling curves also so that is the importance of the cooling curves and also at what time what is the rate of time it is taking to get from the liquid to solid state can also be calculated with the help of these cooling curves so all these cooling curves again we can draw with the help of the gibbs phase rule so that's why the gibbs phase rule is very very important in order to draw the phase diagrams as well as in order to draw the uh, the cooling curves also so that's why the gibbs phase rule is very very important that is the base for the drawing of the phase diagrams as well as the representation of the cooling curves now what happens for the pure metals if you see from the point a so this is the replica of the cooling curve here so point this is a point a i have point b the point c as well as the point d now from point a to point b what is happening this is the pouring temperature what we have so this point a is called the pouring temperature so this is the liquid state what we have at the point a now that's why we we are representing this ab line as a liquid phase so this is the liquid phase and what is the f represents for this here is equal to 1 how many phases are present here so this can be calculated with the help of our gibbs phase rule what is the gibbs phase rule f plus n equal to c plus 1 so so this is the gibbs phase rule so with the help of the gibbs phase rule we are trying to find out what is the value of f here so freezing starts at point b and completes at point c that means so from point b to point c the freezing starts and completes the point at c so now between b and c the metal is in liquid plus solid state so as we have seen in the uh, the phase diagram so what is happening during the conversion from the liquid to solid in between you have a one zone so that zone is a mixture of the solid plus liquid so that is the freezing point where the liquid is trying to convert into solid so that is the period or that is the zone where you have the liquid as well as the solid that is called the freezing state so at this junction or at this point or at this zone you have both the liquid as well as the solid state so that's why in the phase diagram we are representing the phase so here you have liquid this is solid and here l plus s that means liquid plus solid so two things you have at that zone so this is the zone where you have the two representation l plus l that represents for the solid as well as the liquid state now above the temperature indicated by the point b the metal is in the liquid state where you can see as ab line so above that point above that bc zone the complete zone will be in the liquid form so this is the complete zone which is above the l plus l that means it is in the complete the liquid zone now below this what you have you have the complete solid so this is the complete solid so this represents for the complete solid that's why we are writing it as s so l represents for the liquid s represents for the solid l plus l represents for the liquid as well as the solid and if the here f equal to 1 f equal to 0 f equal to 1 how we are getting means with the help of the gibbs phase rule that i'll show now 
application of phase rule in various regions. So, we are applying the phase rule, the Gibbs phase rule in different regions of these cooling curves of the uh, pure materials. Now, see here the same curve we are taking for the pure uh, metal as P plus F equal to C plus N. So, this is the Gibbs phase rule what we are using. So, here how to find out the value of F here? How to find out the value of F? How we are getting the value of F as equal to 1 means here P plus F equal to C plus N. N is nothing but the uh, non variant. So, what is the non variant here? Only the temperature. So, that's why we are taking this as 1. And P is nothing but the number of phases present. Of course, it is a liquid. So, that's why it is F. The P equal to 1. F value we have to find out and C is nothing but the composition. So, here also you have 1. So, totally you have F equal to 1. That's why we are writing F equal to 1 here. So, this F equal to 1 means what? F equal to 1 represents that the temperature can be varied without changing the liquid phase existing in the system. Okay. So, whatever the value of F is there here. So, this F represents for one value as we are getting from the Gibbs phase rule. This F equal to 1 represents that the temperature cannot be, can be varied. This temperature can be varied without changing the liquid phase. So, without disturbing this liquid phase, the temperature can be varied. Is it not? We are varying the temperature along this point up to point A to B. So, from point A to B, you are varying the temperature but without varying the liquid phase existing in the system. So, what are the liquid phase is there? So, this liquid phase we are not varying without this changing of the, we, we can change the temperature without changing the variations of the liquid. So, that is the F equal to 1 represents. Now, in the region BC, so we have seen that in the region AB, this F equal to 1. Now, if we consider the region BC, so, what is happening here? Again, we have to use the Gibbs phase rule that is the P plus F equal to C plus N here. In this case, P is nothing but the number of phases present. So, at this junction, at this zone, we have two phases that is the liquid as well as solid. That's why we are taking P equal to 2 and F value you have to find out. Of course, C is 1 and N is also 1. Now, if you calculate for the value of F here, it is 0. Why it is 0 means it is an equilibrium. It is a stable thing what you are getting at that point of uh, BC. So, we are getting the equilibrium zone at this point. That's why the meaning of F equal to 0 means that the temperature cannot be varied. The temperature cannot be varied without the without changing the liquid and this solid state which is existing in the system. Is it not? So, here since it is reaching to the thermal equilibrium temperature zone, we cannot vary the temperature since it is in a stable condition. So, we cannot vary the temperature. That means F equal to 0 represents that the Temperature cannot be varied without changing that liquid as well as the solid state which exists in the system. So, that is the representation of F equal to 0. Now coming to the other zone of the pure metal that is the BC zone at this point. So, what is happening again here? We have a single phase that is the solid phase. That's why we are taking FP equal to 1 and F you have to calculate C and 1 as 1. So, that we are getting F equal to 1. Again, F equal to 1 represents that the Temperature can be varied without changing the solid phase, solid phase which is existing in the system. So, that is the difference you have to make it a note for the liquid as well as the solid. So, what is happening in the uh, liquid state that is the AB region? AB region also we are getting F equal to 1, and also CD region is also getting F equal to 1. That means in the AB region we can change the temperature without varying the liquid state which is existing in the system. Similarly, in the region CD also, we cannot, we can change the temperature without varying the solid phase which is existing in the system. So, liquid and solid. Now, in between what are the zone we are getting, since it is an equilibrium condition there, there we cannot change the temperature. It is in a stable state. So, we cannot change the temperature along the period in order to uh, make any changes which are existing in the system. So, this is how you have to draw the phase uh, cooling curve in terms of the uh, Gibbs phase tool which represents the graphical representation of change of phases which are existing in the material. <coughs>
Next, coming to the uh, second uh, type of alloy, we have the binary solid solution type of things. So, in this binary, again, it is different from the pure metals. So, pure metals, we have a so liquid, liquid plus solid and solid. Now, coming to the phase uh, binary solid solutions here, what we have? We have some difference in the representation of the uh, cooling curves. So initially we have a liquid, liquid plus solid and solid. But coming to the number of uh, parameters which can be changed are varying when we compare with the pure metal cooling curves. Now if you see clearly in this case from point A to point B again you have a liquid state. And again from point B to point Z, it is the combination of liquid plus solid. Again to solid uh, C to D, you have a solid state. So this is how you are getting the changes of phases for the binary eutectic alloys. Now if you see again the uh, phase rule, when you apply the phase rule for this type of uh, binary eutectic alloys, what is happening? What are the parameters are how the parameters are being changed we can calculate with the help of these Gibbs phase rule. Now again for each phase you have to check now in the region AB if you see what is happening here in the region AB so P plus F equal to C plus N so P of course one phase that is the liquid phase you have one plus F F need to find out here composition it's composition binary means two types of so in, in since it is a binary type of uh, system you have two elements since you have two elements so we are writing c as one in the previous case in the previous case since it is a pure metal pure metal that's why we are taking c equal to one but in this case since it is a binary system that's why c we are writing as two of course n is non uh, variable parameters it is one now in this case we are getting f equal to 2 for binary thing but in case of uh, pure metal we are getting f equal to 1 in the region of ab now here we are getting the f value as 2 in this region ab so this here in the ab region we are getting f equal to 2 that means here both the temperature as well as the composition can be varied without changing the liquid phase which is existing in the system so in the pure metal, we are varying only the temperature without changing the liquid state. But in this case, we can change both the temperature as well as the composition without varying that liquid phase which is existing in the system. So that is how the difference between the primary as well as the binary in case of the liquid region. Now coming to the other region that is the BC region. So what is happening here? The phases are 2 here. F equal to we have to calculate. Again the composition is 2. And the N value is 1. So we are getting F equal to 1. So F equal to 1 represents that any one variable. Any one variable out of the temperature as well as the composition can be varied. Without changing the liquid as well as the solid state which is existing in the system. So whatever the liquid and solid phase are there at this point that is the L plus S. So this cannot be varied. This cannot be varied. But any one of the element, any one of the element or any one of the variable of the temperature and the composition can be varied without changing this liquid plus solid state which is existing in the system. But in case of the pure metal we are getting F equal to but in case of here, we are getting F equal to 1 for the cooling curves. Now coming to the third region that is the CD. This region, again here we are getting F equal to 2. F equal to 2 again represents that the, both the temperature as well as the composition can be varied without changing the uh, solid state which is existing in the system. Okay, So here again A and B and C and D, A, B. CD both are having the F equal to 2 both temperature and composition can be 
varied without changing the uh, solid phase and liquid phase existing in the system. So that is how it represents the uh, cooling curves for the case of the pure metals and the binary alloys. Now coming to the third type of thing, you have the binary eutectic alloy. So a binary eutectic alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two distinct phases. You have two different types of uh, uh, phases which are existing. That's why it's called binary eutectic alloys. So binary eutectic alloys are nothing but the homogeneous mixture of two distinct phases. Here two pure elements are combined as a result of a intermetallic phase which is composed of two elements which is known as psychometric and other phases in primary one element with a fine amount of the other element is dissolved in it. So it is a homogeneous mixture of two different types of elements what we have. So we have two distinct phases which are available while drawing these uh, cooling curves for the binary eutectic alloys. So in this case of binary eutectic alloys also you have from A to B okay it is a liquid state and from B to C you have the liquid plus two solids. Why? Because it is a binary eutectic alloys. Two types of elements or two types of uh, uh, pure metals we are using in, ter in terms of this binary eutectic uh, alloys. That's why you have two solids and one liquid. So that is the difference between the pure as well as the <coughs> binary alloys. And coming to the C to D, after that two solids and one liquid, what is happening? The alloy gets completely solidifies and you have two different mixtures that is the S1 and S2. Okay, in the previous curves, what we are getting? Liquid, solid plus liquid and solid. But the difference for this binary eutectic alloys means you have two different types of uh, elements we are using or two pure metals we are using. That's why we are getting two types of solids that is S1 and S2. And after the uh, solidification also, you have two different solids S1 and S2. So this is the curve what we are drawing for this system. Now again, if you calculate the uh, Gibbs phase tool, if you use and find out the value of F in case of these binary eutectic alloys, <coughs> here the single phase, liquid phase, that's why F equal to 1 and this P equal to 1, F we have to calculate. The compositions are two compositions, that's why it is 2. So therefore, here we are getting F equal to 2 while calculating the value of F. That means that both the temperature and composition can be varied without changing the liquid phase which is existing in the system in case of this element AB. Now coming to the zone BC, again if you calculate for the value of F, you are getting 0. 0 means neither the temperature nor the composition can be varied. You, you cannot be va vary this the temperature or the composition because it is in the stable state, equilibrium state. So you are getting that's why the liquid as well as two solids in this case of the binary eutectic alloys. Now coming to the third region that is the CD. So what is happening completely it is getting solidified. But since you have two different materials that's why it is having two different types of solids which are under equilibrium conditions only. In this case of region CD we are getting the value of equal, F equal to 1. That means again any one variable of temperature or the composition can be varied without changing that solid phases which are existing in the system. Two solid phases are existing in the system. So that is the difference between the uh, binary alloys and binary eutectic alloys. So that is a main difference. They, in the binary things you are getting only one type of solid. But in the case of binary eutectic alloys you are getting two types of solids. Why? Because we are using two types of pure metals in the case of this binary eutectic alloys. And coming to the off eutectic binary alloys means before reaching to eutectic alloys that is called the binary off eutectic. So before reaching to the complete eutectic type of things you are getting some off eutectic that's why we are getting either any one of the solid can be formed. Now in this case if you see here uh, in the previous cases what we got we got a liquid and then completely we are getting a uh, liquid plus two solids and then S1 and S2 for the binary eutectic alloy. But in case of off eutectic, that means before coming to eutectic temperature, 
what is happening means any one of the solid can be formed that's why l plus s1 or s2 and again here the complete liquid plus s1 plus s2 then later on two solids are being formed so that is the main thing you have to differentiate for the case of the eutectic and of eutectic type of things okay there is a difference between binary alloys binary eutectic alloys and off binary eutectic alloys so there is a three different types of alloys are there when you are representing these phase diagrams so earlier it is in the liquid state from the a to b later on it under cooling conditions so liquid plus s1 or s2 so any one form of solid can be get after that it is stabilizing and forming completely liquid plus s1 plus s2 and still more radiation in the temperature it is completely getting solidified we are getting s1 plus s2 so this is how the representation of the cooling curves for the off binary of eutectic alloys <clears throat> so eutectic transformation occurs for a definite composition which is called as eutectic composition so what is the eutectic composition so in the during the phase diagram we have studied that when the composition comes in between point not to to point 76 weight percentage so during this weight percentage whatever the composition are getting that is called eutectic composition so before this point not to 0.22 percent is so that is called off eutectic temperature so if the composition of the alloy differs then this is called as off eutectic temperature so what are the composition eutectic composition we have seen if it is before that composition of the eutectic then that type of alloy is called off eutectic type of alloy and these off eutectic alloys are either of hypo eutectic and hyper eutectic so again you have uh, two types of uh, uh, things in the eutectic thing so eutectic temperature is the range where the composition is between the 0.2 and 0.76 and uh, the composition before that 0.2 0.02 is called as a off eutectic and this off eutectic can be either called as hypo or hyper eutectic type of alloys so hypo eutectic alloys have the composition lesser than the eutectic composition of course uh, from the composition weight percentage only we are deciding whether it is a eutectic or off eutectic and this hypo eutectic alloys are the compositions which are less than the eutectic temperature and hyper means above the eutectic temperature then that type of system are called hyper eutectic type of things now if you see the a to b you have the complete liquid state here in this case of uh, a to b region and coming to the point b from point b the freezing starts so during this freezing what is happening either any one of the solid will be clubbed with this uh, liquid that's why it is l plus s1 or s2 and still reduction in the temperature slowly this any one of the solid completely converts into two solids with the liquid combination you have the equilibrium temperature and after that you are getting the complete solid state so what are the point uh, s1 or s2 with the liquid is there so this will come come up to point c and after the point c you have the complete two solids and liquid zones and this eutectic transformation starts from point c and uh, ends up to point d so this is the transformation of eutectic temperature from point c to point d which is end up to point d now the alloy completely solidifies at point d and there is no change from point d to point d so completely from point up to point d okay when the point d occurs so it completely converts into solids and from there there is no change you have completely a solid state from d to d now if you see each uh, region here totally you have regions of 1 2 3 and 4 regions are available generally we have only three regions but in this case of off eutectic temperature we have the four uh, regions now in each region if you see here the calculate the value of f here with the help of the gibbs phase rule we are getting f equal to in case of uh, in the ab region so f equal to represents that the both temperature 
and the composition can be varied without changing the liquid phase which is existing in the system. That means you can change both the temperature as well as the temperature in the case of region A B without changing the liquid phase which is existing in the system. Now coming to the region B C, what is happening here? So in the B C also, if you calculate the further value of F, F, so you are getting F equal to one here. Uh, that means either the temperature or the composition can be varied without changing the phases that is the liquid as well as the, any one of the solid existing in the system. So that is the representation of the uh, region B C which is existing in the system. And coming to the region C D again, if you calculate the value of F equal to zero. Since it is reaching to the equilibrium position, neither the temperature nor the composition can be varied in that region of C D. Now coming to the last region, that is the D region. So if you calculate the value of F here equal to one, you are getting that means again either the temperature or the composition can be varied without changing the solid phase which is existing in the system. So like that, you will have uh, two types of uh, three types of phases. What are the different types of phases are existing? Depending upon the types of phases, we are trying to draw the graphical representation of these phases to show with respect to the time and the temperature, so that we can get the what is the time duration of any type of element we are getting to settle down or to get the cooling time. And these are some of the differences where you can get the information of the cooling curves. First one is the introduction to uh, physical metallurgy by Sidney Evner. The second one is essential of metal science engineering by Donald. The third one is metal science and metallurgy by Kodigiri, and the fourth one metal science engineering by William Castle. So, <clears throat> in this session, we have discussed about the cooling curves. What is the difference between the phase diagram as well as the cooling curves? How to represent the cooling curves? And from the cooling curves, what are the information we are trying to get? So, the information we are trying to get is what we can. Easily identify what are the changes of phases, how many phases are present, what is the importance of Gibbs phase rule, this Gibbs phase rule, how can we implement in drawing the cooling curves, and how to calculate the number of phases or number of the variables with the help of the number of variables, how to calculate all these things we can done with the help of these cooling curves. Thank you for the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.